Hello and welcome back to another edition of Check It Out. Okay friends, yet another water heater video. If you're struggling with your water heater, hit subscribe to this channel and you'll see that I have a playlist with about four or five, actually I think this is number five video, on how to diagnose and possibly fix your water heater. So today I'm gonna answer a question, does your water heater or this module here use batteries? And the answer to that question is no, it does not. Well, then that brings up another question. So this uses circuitry in here. There's a circuit board and I have proof. Here's a little light right here. You're gonna see blink red in just a moment. So there is some power going to this unit right here. And if that's the case, if there is power going to this unit, how's it getting that power? If you have a gas water heater, you'll see it is not plugged into your wall. There's no power going to it. So how is this guy getting power? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Again, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, check out these playlists and other videos I have. So the long and short of it is this. The water heater actually generates, creates its own power and it does that by a little device called a thermal couple or a thermal pile. Thermal couple and thermal pile are basically synonymous without diving in too deep. They basically do the same thing. And what they do is they generate, I'm sorry, they turn heat into electricity. So this long shaft right here sits in your water heater, or in this case, this actually part goes to a furnace. It would sit in there and the pilot light hits this metal piece. That metal piece, that heat, it generates a small, small amount of electricity, which follows this brass tube that's wound up here and that brass tube will then get connected to this circuitry. And that very, very small amount of electricity that is created when this heats up goes into this unit here, and that's what powers the unit. So it's a very, very small amount of electricity that these units need. So the next step is, well, how do we replace this? And it's a common part to need to be replaced or cleaned. So. Your thermal couple, again, it sits down inside here, down inside your water heater. So right away, my advice would be, if you're gonna try to change this guy out, you need to be very handy, a DIY guy or gal, and be a type of person who's gonna really do their homework and know that you can change this out safely. Once you've done your homework and you know how to do this, there are several videos on how to change out a thermal couple or how to change out a thermal pile. So once you get to that point where you're sure that you're comfortable with it, it's actually a pretty quick change out. So this guy right here would take maybe 20 minutes because I've done it a few times. So I would say if it's your first time, maybe obviously give some more time than that. And if not, maybe it's time to call in that pro or maybe you got an uncle or cousin or somebody like that who is uh, more mechanical and knows how to do these kinds of things. So there's two different things that can happen here is number one, if this is not getting power, it's very likely that this guy needs to be cleaned or replaced. After the pilot's been sitting on this tube for a long period of time, it can build up soot, it can build up debris, it can kind of build up a crusty layer on it. And what happens is even though the pilot is hitting this piece, because there's so much gunk on it, if you will, it's not getting the correct amount of heat, therefore it's not generating the right amount of electricity to send to this unit, and because it's not the right amount of electricity, this unit is actually going to turn off. And it's basically thinking that your pilot is not lit. So even though your pilot might be lit, this guy is a little bit uh, corroded or maybe even broken, right? Maybe even broken. And therefore, it's not getting the right amount of electricity. There are some different ways that you can test these guys with a multimeter as well. I'm not going to do that right now. But you might want to check out. I know there's a couple videos on there on how to check if a thermal couple is um, still good and you might want to do that if you're proficient with a multimeter and by the way I'll put a link to Amazon in the description below and I'll put some thermal couples up there and I'll also put maybe a multimeter that I think is a pretty inexpensive and very good tool to use well how do you get the right thermal couple if you're at that stage where maybe you want to replace it my advice is this make sure that you take a look at that model and serial number make sure that you uh, know who made the manufacturer here of this water heater and you know this um, sticker right here where it says if you have a problem call this number 
these guys are very, very informative. I explained it in another one of my videos that I was having problems with the water heater. They told me to clean underneath this water heater, which I have another video I show you how to do it. Um, and sure enough, that solved my problem. And I have to do that on a regular basis now. But you know, if you're having problems, these people right here, if you have the time, give them a call and see. And of course, this phone number goes to my water heater and, and that program. But look on your water heater and you might have a phone number like that too. So anyway, back to it. Check out those links in the description below. You can try to look up the thermal couple or thermal pile. I would definitely use that model and serial number to make sure that you get the right one. A lot of these guys are a little bit different here. Some use these tubes, some use wire, some have a larger or smaller thermal couple or thermal pile. So you need to get the correct one for your system. And secondly, and again, just to reiterate, you can clean these um, up or you can replace this. But again, you've got to be pretty mechanically sound. You've got to be pretty proficient or good at working on these type of devices or maybe know someone else that is or maybe it's time to call up a pro. If you are skilled and you feel like you can do this safely, these guys are relatively inexpensive. Now, for most of the, these systems, they're designed that you can actually replace just the thermal coupler, thermal pile. Some of the older systems you have to replace, and here's the directions on the back, you have to replace the whole pilot assembly, which includes that pilot, the thermal couple, and also the striker or the device that creates the uh, spark to light your pilot. And so this guy here, you know, it's less expensive if you have to replace the whole unit, um, the whole pilot assembly, obviously that gets a little bit more expensive. I'll, I'll put some descriptions of the pilot assemblies uh, down in the description below, but it's very likely that you could just change this guy out here and solve some problems. But the other thing is that these modern water heaters, you know, there's a lot of problems that can go wrong with them. So one of the most frustrating things to do would be to change this out and have it not be the problem and now all of a sudden you're just changing parts and crossing your fingers that you hit the right one so trying to diagnose it i say is key number one so this was a long video to answer a very short question are there batteries in here the answer is no does it use electricity yes how does it get there it comes from a thermal couple or a thermal pile also just to let you know i'm going to create a uh, videos on each one of these lights on this status light code and i'll explain to you what those codes mean what it looks like when they're blinking those codes, and also how you can diagnose the problem and solve that problem. All right, friends, hey, if this helped you out, hey, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, check out those other videos I have in the playlist. We'll see you next time.